Hello, I'm Yvonne, and I'm here to share a few thoughts about the process of overcoming and how we learn to overcome and how we become overcomers. So I'll start with the word. The word says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So the blood of the lamb, it is the finished work of the cross, right? It's a done deal. It's, it is finished, Jesus said, and there is nothing that we can add to it. However, I believe the Lord, not however, and I believe the Lord has been showing me that we there is a way that we can partner with the blood of the lamb. And the way that we partner, it's right there by the word of our testimony. So it all boils down to what is our testimony? What are the words we are speaking? Are we speaking the words that are true? Are we speaking truth? Are we speaking about the mountain that we're facing or are we speaking to the mountain? Are we confessing what we feel instead of confessing the truth? Are we confessing um, our bad attitude? <laughs> and on and on the list goes. You know, the word says, what a, you know, Philippians 4, 8, whatever is true and lovely and pure, think on these things. And as we think, you know, as a man thinks, so he is. And it's our heart, actually, that thinks. You know, the Hebrew culture understood this. So as we think, we're going to speak. And my encouragement is that we partner with the Lord in this, in being intentional in every single word we speak, that we are intentional to guard the, to guard our lips, to guard our mouth and the words we speak, because there is no idle word. There is no neutral word. Jesus said, you're either for me or against me. And I believe our words reflect that as well. Every single word we speak is either going to advance us on the call of God for our lives, or the word is going to bring us down. And it is our choice. We get to choose what we speak. And I want to go to the Bible for a great example. So Peter, he denied the Lord three times. And had, the, had Jesus left him in that state, that his last words about Jesus had been that, I don't believe he would have became the man that he became, the one who was able to stand up in the upper room and say, we are not drunk, as you suppose. But I get ahead of myself. So after Jesus resurrected, he was so gracious when he appeared to the disciples and he gave Peter he gave Peter that opportunity to change his confession. Three times Peter had denied the Lord Jesus. Now, three times Jesus asked him, do you love me? And three times he gives Peter, I might've said that wrong. Three times Jesus gives Peter the opportunity to change his confession and say, yes, Lord, I love you. And I believe that was the healing that healed Peter's heart. It was the healing he needed to become the man he became. And Jesus was so gracious. And I believe that's an example for us about the, the power of our words. So, you know, Philippians 4, 8, think on these things that are pure and lovely and true. What are we speaking? Are we speaking what the word says, what God says of who we are? Are we speaking who God says we are about ourselves? Are we speaking the truth about who God says he is? Or are we coming in opposition to that with our words? You know, we all you already know it. Our words are going to bless or cur curse. That's every situation. There's no exception. So my encouragement is that you just choose to partner with the Lord in being, you know, walking in that, I don't know whether I want to call it that level of faith, that level of hope, that level of positivity, but that level in intention of intention to partner with what the word says and to stand on the word. And I'll just close out with an example. And I just declare over you, over everyone who hears the sound of my voice, that this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice in this day. And we will partner ourselves in the purposes that you have for us this day, Lord. We will partner. We will partner and bring ourselves into alignment with your purposes for this day, with your goodness, 
over us and towards us for this day. And so we rejoice and we just say yes and amen to every promise that you've spoken over our lives. We say yes and amen. And we thank you for our portion today and all that you have for us, for your plans for us are good. They are grand. They are beyond what we can imagine. So we say yes and amen, Lord. Yes and amen and hallelujah. Amen.